the time now for a Vion investigation special. Picture this, minerals worth 4 lakh crore rupees were transported from the state of Tamil Nadu for over a decade. You might think it's simple, except it's not. What then makes this special and questionable? Amongst other heavy materials, uh, what was being mined was uh, monzite, which according to the country's laws cannot be mined by private players. Who is mining this and why was this allowed? Vion's uh, Sneer Shri Mukherjee transfers through the murky world of mining and mystery. Here is her report. In the world of mining, the name Vaikun Rajan has an ominous ring to it. The 58-year-old founder, chairman of Vivi Mineral, the country's largest miner and exporter of rare earth minerals, garnet, ilmenite and utile. He single-handedly dominates the mining sector of the Nadu with 61 leases to mine beach minerals. On the face of it, Vaikun Rajan might be a businessman with mining interests. But here is where his enterprise gets shady and murky. In September 2013, a ban on beet sand mining and issuances of transport permits for raw sand and minerals came into force. Despite this, an official probe by the Tirunal Valley District Level Committee has revealed that VV Mineral had transported 9.65 lakh tons of heavy minerals between 2014 and 2016. The different mining companies, uh, this VV Mineral transferred uh, uh, Garnet, IMC, BMC, and uh, all these companies, they own mineral separation plants in 15 places. And all these uh, mineral companies, they were operating without any running license under Panchayat Raj Act. So we have sent a notice to produce the running licenses. They failed to produce the running licenses and they went to the court and uh, uh, court uh, in the initial stages, the court uh, directed them to uh, show the running license to the collector and they failed in case of non-availability of the uh, license, they asked uh, to uh, apply again, a fresh. So fresh application they have made and the fresh application because various conditions they have not fulfilled. The minerals derived after mining are garnet, zircon, silmanite, ilmenite, rutile and monazite. The last mentioned mineral, monazite, is the most interesting one. Why? Monazite is a prescribed substance declared under the Atomic Energy Act 1962. Since it contains uranium and thorium, cracking of monazite results in production of uranium used for strategic purposes, while thorium is stored in trenches for future use in nuclear power program of the country. Cracking of monazite also produces rare earths, which has strategic importance in the field of defense, space, department of atomic energy, etc. Vion is in possession of the 16 mining leases, where it is clearly mentioned that amongst other minerals, Tamil Nadu government has given a permission to mine monazite to Vaikun Rajan's company. Interestingly, Tamil Nadu government is not authorized to give permission to any sector for mining of monazite. Only the Department of Atomic Energy is authorized to grant permission for mining monazite. Vion is in possession of the documents from the court in which T.G. Raghavendran, Under Secretary, clearly denies giving any permission to Vaikun Rajan. The document says, it is submitted that no licenses were issued under the atomic energy, working of the mines, minerals and handling of prescribed substances. 
rules 1984 to private parties including vv minerals clearly monazite was not something to be messed with but vaikuntrajan was granted permission to mine it he went a step further and even managed to get permission to process it the location to crack monazite lies 10.5 km away from the kudankulam nuclear power plant Vion has in its possession papers that clearly state that an IS officer Atulya Mishra was the person who granted this permission. The document says VVM will transport the heavy minerals from the MLS to the SEZ for further processing that is cracking of monazite to produce garnet abrasive grid upgraded ilmenite rare earth oxide titanium pigments zircon powder etc at different stages remember all this industrial activity happened in the non crz area the is officer looks clearly a favorite of the ruling aidmk regime as he was promoted as the principal secretary of the tamil nadu government and managing director of the tamil nadu industrial development corporation limited arinikalli mishra was also responsible for the special committee which has formed to check the illegal sand mining and monazite trails the committee was originally to be headed by another officer but mishra was put in the position at the last moment Meanwhile, the export of heavy minerals continued unabated. Despite the ban, Vaikuntrajan exported nearly 1 million metric tons of heavy minerals to China and other countries. While all this happened, there were inner warnings from different sources. One such warning came from Sanjeev Sood from the Department of Atomic Energy. Vion is in possession of the official letter from Sanjeev Sood which warns of the consequences of allowing a private company to crack monazite. The document clearly says VV Minerals does not possess any permission or license for handling or processing of monazite from Department of Atomic Energy. Seeking environment clearance for cracking of monazite under the blanket of SEZ will lead to statutory violation. Obviously the warning was overlooked. Clearly a scam of this size and scale could not have been possible without the support of those in power. Vion is in possession of documents that clearly show how the numbers were fudged to accommodate Vaikuntrajan's illegal mining. The documents show that the total amount of beach minerals exported by Vaikuntrajan has been markedly watered down. It is evident from the document that the office of the Commissioner of Customs has failed to do a simple mathematical calculation. While we look into the gravity of the incident, let's understand how monazite is derived. Once the raw sand is taken to factory, it is subjected to wet gravity separation, after which the wet sand is separated out. It then goes under high tension electrostatic separation. According to the properties of the components in the sand, it further goes through different processes. From process 1, ilmenite is derived, which is used in the production of titanium dioxide. from process 2 rutile is derived which is a major ore of titanium through process 3 we get silimanite it is used in various industries like cement ceramics refinery and treatment coal carbonization etc and through a simultaneous process involving low intensity magnetic separation on one hand garnet is derived 
and on the other hand by default we get monazite enriched tailings to put it in simple words all the miners with the permission to process garnet is left with radioactive monazite tailings and to put things in perspective as per the claims vivi mineral is mining since 1989 The processing of beet sand for garnet leaves behind tailings that is rich in monazite. These monazite enriched tailings are supposed to be stored under specified conditions as prescribed by Department of Atomic Energy. The Department of Atomic Energy has clearly mentioned that they have not issued any handling licenses to Vaikuntharajan for monazite tailings. The question then is How was Vaikuntharajan continuing this mining and processing with impunity? There are more questions. Vaikuntharajan has been in the mining business since 1989 in Tamil Nadu, a state with third highest concentration of monazite in India. The next question then is, where has all the monazite tailings since 89 been dumped? are they monitored by any department or the stillings have been illegally exported as well questions that evidently have no conclusive answers so what makes monazite such a lucrative mineral to mine why is this mineral so sought after monazite which is a greenish yellow phosphate mineral containing rare earth metal is an important source of thorium lanthanum and cerium it occurs usually in small isolated crystals thorium has been recognized as another radioactive nuclear material for producing energy indigenously in fact india is now progressing steadily towards a thorium based nuclear program it has been extracted chiefly from monazite the world's reserve of monazite is estimated to be in the range of 12 million tons of which nearly 8 million tons occur with the heavy minerals in the beet sands of india in the states of kerala tamil nadu andhra pradesh and orissa monazite is a principal source for thorium and indian rare earth limited is a leading supplier of monazite in the country none other than irel is allowed to process the monazite Monazite apart from being a potential nuclear material it is also a major source for rare earth metals this then is the most probable reason that china is interested in monazite we have uh, roughly 50000 staff and uh, employees basically composed of researchers professors and technicians and so on so forth and at the same time we also offer 50,000 graduate students PhD degrees and a master degrees and the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics is one of them affiliated with the academy and the institute is focused on nuclear science and technology and recently the academy of sciences launched a initial a pioneer initial program it's called thorium melting salt reactor project Why rare earths define our future? Today's China's rare earth monopoly lends itself to direct and indirect control over 7 trillion dollars in value added goods around the world. This amounts to 10% of the global economy. But more specifically, it represents the highest growth and widest margin businesses, a position traditionally controlled by the US, Germany and Japan. This is resulting in an ever increasing level of control over the integration of western defense programs and the dwindling of national tax bases. China at the highest levels of government decided that the rare earth industry was critically important and they intended to dominate that market. It's it's interesting to note that the one rare earth mine that you can see here in blue was eventually shut down not for competitive reasons or costing reasons it was shut down because they had a thorium discharge from their tailings pipe 
the EPA and environmental groups uh, put enough pressure on them, they eventually set, shut down. There is more in common between India and its defense and strategic partner U.S. when it comes to China. There's 57 pages of weapons systems that the U.S. is 100% dependent on China for. These don't even include the stuff that the soldier in the field carries, his communication or targeting systems. All of these also require rare earths. There's 100 systems. Every one of them is 100% dependent on China. If that's not news, there is no news. We need to find a champion who's going to stand on the floor of the Senate and say, we're either going to pass this rare earth bill and solve this problem, or I'm going to order the inspector general to do a criminal probe of every defense contractor breaking the law. It is interesting to note that all this has happened right under the nose of the administration but has not made major headlines. Though there are no direct links that can be established between Vaikun Rajan and the late Chief Minister Jailalitha, it is interesting to note that Jailalitha had indirect interest in Vaikun Rajan's business. Here is how. The Tamil Nadu State Marketing Corporation or TASMAC is a company owned by the government of Tamil Nadu, which has a monopoly over wholesale and retail vending of alcoholic beverages in the state. Midas, the major supplier to TASMAC, is indirectly owned partially by Shashikala, friend of Jailalitha, J. Ilavarsi, Shashikala's sister-in-law, and Sri Jaya Finance and Investments, majorly owned by J. Ilavarsi. Vaikun Trajans of VV Minerals, the firm which has been accused of illegal beach mineral mining, held major share in Midas. There are enough indications to feel that former Chief Minister Jailalitha Jayaram was on the side of Vaikun Trajan. This is clearly established by the fact that Midas was favoured heavily during the previous AIDMK regime, as procurement of liquor went up from 12 lakh cases in 2003 to 4 to almost 51 lakh cases in 2005 to 6. Apart from this, there is enough documentary evidence with Beyond to establish that there were huge financial transactions between companies owned by Vaikun Trajan and companies in which Jailalitha Shashikala and her relatives had a seizable stake. But even as the monazite mining went on, evidently with the blessing of Amma, the government of India started questioning the Tamil Nadu government about illegal monazite mining. The central government questioned the Tamil Nadu government's decision to allow Vaikon Trajan to mine monazite from the beach sands of Tamil Nadu. This clearly forced Jalalita's hand and she suspended the bureaucrats who gave the permission for the same. It was in beginning of August in 2015 that she suspended the two bureaucrats involved in extending the mining lease for Monazide. Shockingly though, both of them were reinstated by the government after her demise. This clearly speaks volumes of the respect that the current AIDMK leaders had for their Amma. So here is the story in a nutshell. Jailalitha had a stake in Vaikun Trajan's company and in her regime, the permission to mine monazite was given to VV Mineral. At one point, Jalalita felt the heat from the centre on this issue and hence banned sand beach mining. But Vaikun Trajan was unstoppable. After her death, Shashikala rewarded Atul Mishra with a plump post of principal secretary and reinstated both the bureaucrats. It is indeed disturbing that despite being of a huge concern, the issue is far from being investigated. Vaikun Trajan roams free. There is no check on how genuine are the account of monazite or monazite tailings mined or stored. Tamil Nadu may be facing political uncertainty, but more than which actor becomes a politician or which party stays or forms the government 
the state should be looking at who is guarding its natural resources and question the undisputed reign of Vaikuntrajan.